morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of Voice of Radio, so today we need to have a little bit of a look at the official rotation. The other day, I showed you a video telling you what the rotation was likely to be. Well, today, ladies and gentlemen, I am here to tell you the rotation has been officially announced over in Japan. And this is a very, very big deal. And to be blunt, it is basically exactly what we were expecting. But now we have the date. And I know we have the date for Japan, not the date for us. No, 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 no. We have the date for us as well. Now, the date for Japan is nice and simple. We have got the date of the 26th of January. Now, why is that relevant? It's relevant because that is the release day of Cyber Force and Wild Judge, which over in Japan is Scarlet and Violet 5. And we saw this last year. Last year, Japan rotated on the release day of Scarlet and Violet 1. That is to say the Scarlet and Violet base set. And then we rotated on the release date of Scarlet and Violet 1, which is to say the Scarlet and Violet base set. That is going to happen again. Now, we don't actually have the release date of Scarlet and Violet 5 for us at the moment. It's not been announced. It's going to be our February set. Although last year they did do it in March, which is a bit weird. But it got delayed for certain reasons. So maybe it's going to be February. Maybe it's going to be March. But the next main set we have, not Paldea and Fates. Paldea and Fates is an extra set, a special set. Call it what you will. That doesn't count. But the next main set, the next proper set we have, Scarlet and Violet 5. I am 100% certain that the release date of that will be when we officially rotate. I am saying it right now. I'm calling my shot on the 23rd of December. I refuse to believe there is any other date on which we will be rotating. We are going to be rotating on the day that that drops. Because it makes sense. We copied Japan's homework last year. We are going to copy Japan's homework this year. So although I can't sit here right now and tell you the exact date, because the next set hasn't been announced, so we don't have a release date, whenever that is announced, we will have our rotation date. It's going to happen. Now, we had kind of a fun thing last year that we also rotated on the opening day of the European Championships. But I've had a lot of time to think about this since I made my rotation prediction video a couple of weeks ago. Please bear in mind that it was also the day that it became legal. Ah, oh, wait a second. Sorry, I lied to you. Let me be clear. I'm sorry, I've lied. It's going to be the day it's legal for tournament play. The confusion comes around. In Japan, there's no gap. So in Japan, a set comes out and on the day it releases, it's legal for tournament play. That is not the case over here. We have a couple of weeks grace. So whatever date it becomes legal for tournament play is going to be the actual rotation date. My apologies. Last year, the EUIC was actually on the day. Like that started the day that Scarlet and Violet became legal. So it was the same day. That's when rotation happened. Here... It is going to be the day that Scarlet and Violet 5 is legal, which, like I say, in Japan, it's the same day. The release day and the legal day, they are the same day. Over here, that's not the case. So we do have to, we're going to have to wait a couple of weeks until it's actually legal. Which is going to be like a couple of weeks after the set releases. That is like, I've got about like a 99% certainty of that one. They could hold off till the opening day of EUIC. But again, they, they didn't actually hold off till the opening day of EUIC last year. They did it on the day Scarlet and Violet became legal. That just so happened to be the first day of EUIC, which incidentally was amazing. Having a brand new set, which started a new block and rotation on the same day and having an IC starting that day, that was amazing. I was delighted to be able to cast that event. So anyway, that's when, what about the what? Well, it's everything we're expecting. They've gone from E, F, and G to F, G, and H. What that means is they are getting rid of all E block cards, which basically means they are rotating battle styles, chilling rain, evolving skies, fusion strike, and celebrations, which is actually kind of relevant. And celebrations is a weird one, right? Because Celebrations as a whole was like this 25-card set. It's tiny. 
But actually, if we look through celebrations, we've got the Mew that sees a bunch of play. We've got the Zacian, which is a really good tech in Gardevoir decks. We've got the Kyogre, which is really good in Lost Zone decks. Celebrations was a really good set full of really good cards. Now, I did go through this in a lot more detail the other day, so please check out that video. I will link it in the description. But there are certain things that are happening here. So, the Rapid Strike deck is just going entirely. I mean, you're losing Urshifu, you're losing Inteleon, you're losing Metacham. Like, you're losing everything. You're, you're losing all the Rapid Strike cards. All the Single Strike cards as well, for what it's worth, but that deck's not good. Uh, Mew is going, she's using Mew, Genesect, all the Fusion Strike stuff is all going. So again, Mew as a deck is going to be completely and utterly gone. But then it gets kind of interesting. Like, Maridon is still legal, still viable, still can be played. But Maridon uses Flaffy to accelerate energy. And it's not able to do that anymore. And it's a weird one. Maridon's confusing me. I really want to see how this does post-rotation. Because also, like, we see enough games where the player doesn't get Flaffy out and still wins. But it's clearly nowhere near as good if you don't get Flaffy out. So, yeah. I'm going to leave that one up to you. Palkia is still absolutely legal. We keep Palkia in the format. But you lose Ice Rider Calyrex and you lose Melanie. And Melanie's actually kind of a big deal. So, that's a bit awkward, right? Without Melanie to accelerate energy and without Ice Rider Calyrex as an extra attacker, you can still play Palkia, don't get me wrong, but it is like a billion times weaker than it would otherwise be. So the format is going to be mixed around a lot. Uh, one more example, Gardevoir. Gardevoir as a whole is sticking around. Gardevoir EX stays in the format. But I've already mentioned you lose Zacian. And you're going to be losing the Refinement Curlia, which is a big deal. And you're going to be leaving the Shining Arcana and Brainwave back in the old block. That's rotating. You're not going to have that anymore. And actually, oh, and you're losing Mirage Step Curlia as well. You're losing all the good Curlia. And actually, losing all of those cards is going to have a huge impact on Gardevoir moving forward. So, you've got the obvious decks, like Mew and like Rapid Strike. Which are just like, don't even bother. You're literally losing all of the main Pokemon. And then you've got the other decks where, well, sure, they're viable. But you're losing a lot. But then you've got stuff like Lost Zone Giratina decks. They lose nothing. Nothing, really. All of the main cards in that deck are staying around. So Lost Zone Tina is staying around and it's not really losing anything. Charizard decks don't really lose anything as well. And don't get me wrong, there's a few cards like everybody's losing. But in terms of important stuff, it's not really losing anything. But one thing that is going away for everybody is Battle VIP Pass. And actually, while we're here, Level Ball. So searching out your basic and your low-level Pokemon is going to be a lot more difficult. So I say something like Charizard is going to stay around because it's keeping all of its cards, and it is everybody's losing these Pokemon search options, and some decks are going to cope a lot better losing these search options than others. You know, Maridon is not really going to care about the lack of Battle VIP pass, because one Maridon gets all of your Lightning Pokemon out, you're good. But there's a lot of Evolution decks out there that are going to lament the loss of this a lot more. So what we've got then is a rotation which is basically knocking out Year 2 of Sword and Shield. Like I've said, basically we're losing Battle Styles, Chilling Rain, Evolving Skies, Fusion Strike, and Celebration. Second year of Sword and Shield is going away. But remember, it's really done on your regulation mark here. So E goes away. If there's a little E in the bottom left corner, it goes. If there's an Effigy or an H, it stays around. It is happening in Japan on the 26th of January, which is the day that the set comes out, Scarlet and Violet 5, which is also the day it becomes legal. For us, it is going to be the date that Scarlet and Violet 5 becomes legal for tournament play, whenever that might end up being. And basically, as soon as Scarlet and Violet 5 gets revealed and we've got a release date, then we'll know when it's legal, and then I'll be able to tell you with a great degree of certainty when the rotation is going to take effect.
But as it stands at the moment, I'm afraid that's information I cannot share with you. I am sorry. So I made it sound like I've got a big secret then. I can't share it with you because it's not out there. It's not been announced. It's not been revealed. The information is not out there. I am sorry. So there we go. That's what you need to know. Start prepping for rotation, ladies and gentlemen. What I will say is, although I don't think that we're going to be seeing the rotation on the first day of EUIC. EUIC, we do have the dates for the April 5th to the 7th. So maybe it's like last year and we get the set in kind of late March and rotation happened today of EUIC. Or maybe we get it late February, early March and rotation happens just before EUIC. I feel extremely confident that the rotation will take effect on or before the European International Championships. Basically, if the set releases on the 22nd, that would then trigger rotation on April the 5th, the first day of the UIC. Scarlet and Violet 5 would have to come out after the 22nd in order for us to rotate after EUIC. And I could see kind of a 15th or 22nd release date kind of like we had for Scarlet and Violet last year. I don't think there is any realistic chance that we are going to see this set releasing after the 22nd. I think the 22nd is a hard cutoff. And you know what? They did it last year where we had new set and rotation on the first day of EUIC. They could do it again. I'm not saying they are, but I'm saying they did it once. They could do it again. Although just to be clear, March the 22nd for what is usually our February set, it would be late. They did it last year. But it was the first Scarlet and Violet set. It would be late. But they could do it. Do not make any pre-rotation decks for UIC. There's some advice on your old pal Wossy. Right, there we go. That's what you need to know. Now it's over to you guys. Tell me what you think about all of this in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Wossy. That's where we talk Pokemon, card games, all kinds of fun things. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all kinds of fun things. And get shoutouts on the channel like the lovely Chelsea Rose, who's one of our biggest supporters over on Patreon and is a very lovely person. So shout out to them for the support and the loveliness. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.